Hey, it's Anfan, you're watching Anfa Vlog. Anfa Vlog. In the previous video, I have introduced you to Wolf Shaper, which is a free and open source distortion plugin for Linux and Windows. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use it as a mixing tool. So, let's begin! All right, so here is my Ardor session. First, I'm going to play parts of the track so you can understand what the sound is and what the mood is. So it's a psychedelic trance track, as you can hear. Now I'm going to go to the beginning of the session and, well, I'm just going to go through every single track in this project and try to use Wolf Shaper to enhance the sound. So the first one is the kick. I'm going to isolate the kick. Let's select all the regions it plays and loop it. Now, as you can see, or hear rather, the kick has a low pass filter on it, which is automated. Here it is. So I'm going to bypass that for now. It's going to give us the full sound and that's going to be easier to just, you know, do our work because uh, otherwise it will be changing all the time. So I've added Wolf Shaper here. Let's do it before the filter so that the filter will remove any extra harmonic content that we add with distortion. Now, let's just try. I'm going to add a point and change this curve to drive it. Sounds much more harsh, or rather hard, driven. Let's see if I back it off to the dry signal. Now, some of that is pretty nice. I'm gonna try to match the input and output levels, so when I bypass the plugin, Let's hear how loud it is. It's louder after distortion, so. And now it's kind of the same. So this is what the distortion changes in our kick. Let's enable the filter again and listen. Without, or with, without. It's still fuller, it sounds more punchy more aggressive. Sometimes it's very subtle, sometimes it's more pronounced. In the overall mix, it's going to be pretty subtle, I think. Okay, let's move on. Let's go to hi-hat. Let's select the regions its place and solo it. The hi-hat is super silent here, or quiet, rather. I am going to make it louder for that matter. You can hear it better. And let's insert Wolf Shaper once again. There it is. By default, as you can hear, Wolf Shaper doesn't do anything. The function is a straight line, it doesn't distort at all. Now let's see what we can do. I can hear it's adding drive. Let's see. Oh, that's very different. Oh, wait a minute. There's the filter also doing things. Yep. So when we disable the filter... It still kind of feels bottom heavy now. It's probably because the distortion is bringing up all the low frequencies that were present there, but where we subtle, uh, we probably could use some um, equalizer to see what's going on. Okay, let's... See, this is EQ10Q, let's play it again. And 
Now, without the distortion, let's enable the analysis, or maybe in the spectrogram. Uh, let's give it some gain so we can see it better. This is without distortion, this is after distortion. You see, we have lots of low frequency content that just wasn't brought up, and the distortion brings it up. Now, we might not want it, so I'm going to high pass this. Let's see how the two actually affect the sound. It's much more pronounced, I can say that. And louder, so I'm going to turn it down. Distortion makes it sound like the notes are longer. I've, I'm not sure if we have some hint of reverb there. It might be. All right, let's move on to the second hi-hat. It's a bit different. This one is like a more... It's adding a backbeat to the thing. Let's add Wolf Shaper to that and see what we can do. Now, how about we do something a little bit more strange? Let's use a stairs function. Oh, looks like it didn't work. And this basically creates um, quantization errors. <laughs> Basically, I bet, like bit the production without uh, dithering. Let's listen. It's interesting what it's doing. I, I want to add some EQ after that to to make that really shine. But yeah, let's let's keep it. It's it's interesting. It, I hear the most stuff going like in the low mids. I want to correct that. So sculpt the tone a little bit. I don't want so much low, low mids. I, I don't like this. More some high mids, yeah. Or even the highs. Oh, oh that was low pass, sorry. Is that too much highs? I'm not sure. I like this. Uh, the hi-hats got <laughs> louder overall, but I think that's not a bad thing. I think it works. Next is the clap snare. Let's loop its regions. It actually sounds more like a snare than a clap, but kind of exhibits both characteristics. Let's add Wolf Shaper and see what we can do with it. I have too many favorite plugins, sorry. <laughs> Let's see. You know, I'm placing the first point to kind of see where the where the peak is, so I don't have to use so much pre-gain. Or actually I don't have to use pre-gain at all. However, I could. I could even remove this. Now, instead of using post gain, I can just bring this down. However, if I have more points, I can't. It's easily so. Post gain is very useful. So as you can hear, the distortion makes the sound again, sound longer because we are shaving off, we are cutting off the transient, so it doesn't stand out anymore and we kind of equalize it in loudness to the tail of the sound, which makes the whole thing sound in some way bigger. I kind of like this transient, so I want to keep it a little bit of that. Yeah, but again, this makes the sound 
Buffalo. I think it's a bit quiet. Yeah, I like it. I like how the drums are sounding now. They are... I don't know. They, I feel like they're more coming together instead of like playing everyone in their own domain. We also have the drums bus. Um, but I don't think I'm going to touch it now, maybe in the end. Let's now move on to the bass. The bass plays throughout the whole thing, like the kick. And yeah, this is a very important part of the track. Let's, this and the kick is like the whole basis of the Psytrance feel. The rest is just uh, like the support of that. Now we have some clicks that are come up from the sidechain compressor because it's ducking too fast and it's kind of clipping the waveform. You see, if I reduce the attack, it's it's reducing the volume the volume so quickly that it actually distorts. All righty, let's add some Wolf Shaper and see what we can do. As you can hear, this bass is kind of developing. There's also a filter there. Let's see, we have it after the reverb. I'm not sure if that's gonna work well. Kinda. I think I like it before the reverb more. It's, it's not as messy. Generally, Adding reverb to bass sounds is dangerous, so when I use that, I always make sure that the reverb has filtering so I can filter out the low frequencies. And this reverb does that. It just filters out at one kilohertz. So everything below one kilohertz is almost gone, uh, more or less, because well, I don't know how, this, how steep is this filter, but yeah, like it's important to get rid of the bass in your reverb if you are adding reverb to a bass instrument or it's gonna sound really bad. It, you're just gonna take out all the all the groove and the punch from the bass. Uh, I think this is too much drive. You see, the cool thing about this is that I can mix different types of re distortion. Let's add just a hint of this sound. Yeah, just a little bit of a crunch. Isn't it too quiet now? I think I've made everything louder and the bass is just falling behind right now. <laughs> Maybe I should turn down the kick. But even the lead is louder, what the heck? I think I've turned it way too much. Yeah, I've turned it away too much. Without it, it's almost single out velocity now. Oh, the height is too, too loud. I like the new Clapsner sound. It's, it's really better. All right. So there it is. Now the lead. The lead is a very interesting part because it's very complex. There's a lot of things going on. However, that's for another video. We have lots of automation. Two of them are controlling the reverb, two lanes. And we have also a filter, which is bandpass. Here it is. I can hear why it's doing what it's doing. And finally, we have a delay, which we, have, we control the time and the bypass. So when the notes are not playing, we're enabling the delay, changing the, the delay time. And it's, it has like almost 100% feedback. So it basically loops the, this forever, which creates this cool sound. So let's see what we can do with distortion here and where we should use it. I will try to use it maybe closer to the source, like, you know, somewhere right after the compressor, maybe. Let's maybe loop. Um, just a single phrase of this and see what we can do. 
Well, this is way louder now, of course. Let's turn it down. Let's see what we can do by doing something a bit less normal. I'm gonna try to make this pregame work. Okay, it's still a bit quiet, so I'm going to move the whole thing to the left. I could use some band modes probably for that. How about this? I think this peak is really, really a peak. Uh, I'm gonna push the compressor harder because I don't, I can't really get this distortion that I would expect. Okay, so it's definitely something. Maybe it's because of the band pass. <laughs> Let's disable the band pass. Yeah, we're crushing it. How about putting it after the band pass? Oh, that's... That's insane. It's pretty fun, but... <laughs> now we would need to cut down the amount of reverb so it doesn't... It doesn't, you know, blow up so much in the distortion. Maybe let's try it. I'm going to make the wet signal... Oh, wait, is this all wet? Oh, wait a second, we are automating this. It's not gonna be so simple to turn down. Mm. Yeah, I'm automating the wet and dry amount, so... And there's no easy, not an easy way to, to actually change that. There's not like a dry wet knob. Hmm, okay. Let's see. Is that interesting? Is that nice? Let's listen in the context of the song. I think my face expression is a little bit distorted, wave shaped because of this headwear. Better now? Okay. These are just ideas. Uh, I'm not now like doing things that I would normally do to make this sound, this track sound the best because I would use different plugins also and more plugins. And now it's just a playground for experimenting with distortion, uh, specifically with Wolf Shaper. So don't quote me on this saying, hi, just trash this track, man. It's terrific, ridiculous bad. Okay, now it's time for explosions because explosions are cool. Who doesn't like explosions? By the way, as a side note, I have made this entire track without any freaking distortion, man. I did it all for you. I would normally never manage to make a full track without any distortion. I did it just to show you what you can then add with distortion back. So please appreciate that effort on my side of making my track not distorted at all. It's super clean, it's just... It's the crystal sound. Okay, let's maybe do it... No, let's do it in the end of the chain, let's see. Now, explosions without distortion is like... Ice cream without ice cream. Now that's an explosion. That's how you blow things up. Distort the shit out of it! There's too little distortion in it, I think we need that more. Now, you can feel the power in this, right? That's why distortion is there. We need it. We need, we need it to blow up. That's the proper way you, you do it. Yeah, of course, there's too much of it. So, yeah, I'm just joking now. Not too much of distortion. There's too much of the explosion sound in the mix. But the distortion is just the best. Fantastic, now it sounds way better. Okay, now what's happening after that? Well, this was in the previous video. In the UV27, we just basically operated on this track, the whole thing, and then I just scrolled up and show you this. So there's not much more to do here. Uh, let's maybe talk about this because you haven't heard this yet. This is my voice.
pitched to MIDI notes and then vocoded it again with a synth using these notes too. It's a pretty interesting thing. But I don't think we can actually do anything useful with distortion in this. It, it would make it sound messy and bad. So excuse me as I proceed to the drum bus. Now let's loop the whole thing. Eh? Or maybe, no, let's pick up a, pre a place where the, the drums are really intense. Ah, yeah. Now let's add Wolf Shaper onto this drum bus. Now where should we put it? Maybe after the compression. I'd like some light saturation. Maybe, maybe not more. Interesting, when I turn it down, Well, that was ridiculous, but pretty awesome. Let's see if we can keep that awesomeness without the ridiculity of it. It's, it's a very thin line between making it ridiculous and terrible and making it awesome. But I think it's always good to try. And I think we did our best in the 25 minute time frame that I gave for this. Actually, I didn't, I just made it up. So there it is. Uh, I'll just let you now enjoy the whole thing in the background. As I talk to you. Thanks for watching. I hope you've learned something. Um, if you have any questions or suggestions for the future videos, please leave them in the comment section below. I would also like to give big thanks to all the Patreon supporters. Uh, there are new Patreon supporters after the last video, the Anth of Log 27 that I published. And there has been a record established, a new record. The previous record, I believe, for a single, p single person's pledge was $5 per month. Now it's $10 per month, so the bar is raised. <laughs> and now uh, we've crossed another milestone. We are over $50 a month, which is very important for me because that's kind of sort of pays for <laughs> one work day of me. So that's very important because uh, I've, I'm have i starting to cut off time from my full-time job as a graphic designer, actually kind of software developer lately. I, I'm, I'm more programming in Bash. Yeah, Bash kind of ridiculous, right? than doing graphics recently, but never mind. So I'm taking away the time from my full-time job and putting it into this. Now, for it's just two hours a month, but as your support grows, this is gonna grow too. So if you like these videos, if you wanna see more of them and wanna see better videos from me, please consider becoming a Patreon subscriber. You can also get some cool bonuses like uh, free access to my album and access to a private dis Discord server where I talk about stuff that I don't talk with publicly because they're too crappy. Anyway, this track is available for download. You can get this version and just play around with it. So yeah, enjoy. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye. What the fuck?